Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shackcast episode number 15. Uh, we're going to talk about, is social media worth it? Um, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of social media. We'll talk about uh, some of the different platforms. And uh, if you've seen my um, episode where I showed up on the podcast, uh, Verbal vibe mode, uh, which I'll have a link in the description to that once again. Uh, we did talk a little bit about my uh, sojourn from social media, and I, I'm not very active on a lot of social media to begin with, um, but I was I was really sticking with Twitter for quite a while, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background here. Um, Let's see, my last tweet is January 1st. My New Year's resolution, uh, among many, of course, we've, we've already talked about this in previous episodes of the Shack cast, uh, but my New Year's resolution is to dump social media. You'll find me on YouTube creating content, connecting with the community on Discord, and creating special content just for Patreon. Happy 2022, everyone. And that was one of my biggest tweets, apparently. A lot of people liked it and really haven't done much uh, before or after that in terms of uh, dropping content or, or communicating via Twitter. So I, I guess why, why take a uh, sabbatical from social media? Well, uh, I, I guess it started several years ago with Facebook. Um, I think it was probably like 2015, 2016, things were getting like really toxic and and Facebook was just nothing but political arguments and and all through certain years you know it was just constant bickering between friends and family and finding out who cares about healthcare you know what uncle of yours might have like racist <laughs> attitudes and you know just people sharing the worst things on social media um and especially how Facebook became this toxic mess of, of fake news and politici politici politicizing of, you know, family and friends and, and just sort of tore everyone apart. And I, I decided to only keep it because, uh, you know, it's like the there's like a few friends and family members that that's like the only way to really keep in touch or, or just know what's going on in their lives. Um, so what I did with Facebook was I completely removed it from my phone years ago. And I only check it on the computer. And that's only when I'm like, oh, it's been like several months. Maybe I should check in and make sure no one sent me like an emergency message or I haven't like been invited to like a wedding or something, you know, something weird. Um, so there's that. And I, I check it occasionally and, and very rarely is there anything of substance that I need to, to look in on. Um, so yeah, not on my phone. And when it comes to Twitter and Instagram, which I decided to keep those um, for several years until this year, um, I, I still have them on my phone because I know I need the profiles. You know, I don't want to lose my name, you know, my name, uh, what do you call it, like your, uh, your username. I wouldn't want to lose that, so... Uh, and, and I wanted to make sure that I had all my passwords and stuff, so I just decided I would keep it on the phone as a safe uh, safety precaution here. Um, but what I've done for Twitter and Instagram on my phone is I've completely disabled notifications. Um, and the reason for that was I, I kind of tried to quietly back off on the notifications and, and kind of say like, oh, okay, well, I only want to know if like someone tags me in something. Like if someone really is trying to reach me and, you know, someone's tagging me in something and I want to just like it to support them back, you know, other content creators or whatever it may be. But even then, I was still getting things coming through the cracks like, uh, you know, see what so-and-so just posted on Instagram. Like, and what those notifications are is is there sort of for you to glance at your phone and and to see that which i i guess i don't really have any uh showing right now um but yeah i guess look at how the weather channel is like sending me like 
a dozen different weather events. They really want to see if they can get my attention about severe weather things, uh, maybe not even related to me, or like just funny like videos of animals and stuff, you know. And and so Instagram is kind of doing that where it's like saying, hey, your friend started a live video or see what someone liked or, or whatever it may be. And so at some point I was like, even though I've disabled specific things, like I just, I really don't want to know if someone follows me. You know, I don't need the notification for every single thing. And I tried to get it down to where it was just people tagging me, but the app was still defying me because... It's kind of like when you cancel Netflix. They're going to email you every day saying, when are you coming back? Look at all the shows we have. Here's our new price. Uh, we'll, we'll welcome you back at eight ninety nine dollars for, for a year or maybe a couple of months, and then we'll hike it up to 15 bucks. So at some point, I just had to, had to look at Twitter and Instagram, disable all notifications, and I only check it if, if I'm like just in the mood to just look and see if I got any notifications. Okay, I don't. I can click off of it um, because one of the cons that we're going to talk about is that it, it does sort of trap you in the endless scrolling and and in things like uh, sort of like TikToks and YouTube shorts and stuff. You can really get trapped in the endless scrolling from one video to the next, whether it's comedic stuff or dance videos or whatever you're into. It, it can become a real time leech. Um, so we'll talk about some apps, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we'll even talk about Discord because I think Discord, in a sense, has is sort of a social media app. But I believe it's one, uh, for me, that has been more helpful than hurtful. And that's why I look at things like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook with such disdain because I'm starting to see them more over the years as, as hurtful than helpful. But we'll get into the nitty-gritty on that. Um, so, yeah, some of the cons that we'll talk about here is that uh, it, it's a time leech, right? When you're checking these apps or when you're getting notifications, you know, they obviously want you to check these apps. And then they want you to start scrolling. They, and they want you to see, especially on Instagram, it used to just show photos. And it was photos of, you know, you and your friends and whoever you follow but now it's more of what you don't follow. It's more of like, not just ads, because obviously all social media is meant to sort of, that it's meant to like learn your personality, the things you like, the things you don't like, and then target you for ads and sell that ad data to companies and, and, and to have things pull up on your phone that you might be interested in buying. So on Instagram, it's always like guitar gadgets or guitars or journals, leather-bound journals and stuff, you know, or fancy pens, you know. They got me all figured out. Um, and so I'll see stuff like that, but then I'll just see, like, endless things that I don't follow, but they're trying to track my interests. They know I'm a guitar player. They know I like to follow guitar players. So they're showing me endless guitar videos, right? And and so that can sort of, based on what you like, whether it's video games or fashion or models or whatever it may be, you know, it's going to pull up more of that. And so the, the app started to become less about, I hardly even see anything my friends post, even if they're posting stuff on the daily because there's so much other filth I have to get through. So it's a time leech, and it's meant to get you endlessly scrolling, and it becomes a time waster. And if you're a productive individual, um, if you're someone like me that needs to be using their free time to be creative, to work on songwriting, singing, playing guitar, um, creating content for YouTube, whatever it may be, you know, you don't need this distraction. And that's that's what I'm really getting to. And so because of the endless scrolling, it becomes an addiction to sort of catch up on the day. When you, when you hit, when you scroll through Twitter and then you finally see the post that you saw yesterday, it's like, ah, I finally navigated through all the news. I haven't missed a thing. It becomes an addiction. And another way to point this out is that I, I find it rude when people do this, but it's like when you're hanging out with family or friends and you're like, kicking it on the couch and you're like watching a movie together like if I bought the movie or if I rented the movie or if 
you know, we're using my account to watch the movie or whatever. Like, it, it's kind of offensive that we've all gathered and we should all focus our, our attention solely on the movie and on each other and having a good time, a good experience. And then you're just there, just like mindlessly scrolling through your phone because you literally can't part yourself from it. You can't be bothered to just focus on one thing. You become so used to having to always do this and always do that and always have to multitask. It's, it's almost become a disease in and of itself and an addiction. So that's where I think it starts to become difficult. And of course, if you're on like a date or you're hanging out with friends and you're on your phone, it's just rude. You should be sharing your time and your attention, unless you don't care about the person you're with and you should just be honest with them. But it's very rude too. So I always have my phone like face down. And if, I, if I'm expecting a call or if I look, if it rings and I'm like, oh, this is an emergency, I really need to get this. Or, or hey, let me just tell them, I'm busy right now, or whatever it may be. Or or just say, hey, I'll get it later. It's not that important. Um, so some of the other things are a little more serious. Uh, social media can impact your mental health. Uh, it can cause anxiety um, just based on whether you're being bullied or you're comparing yourself to others, you might have sort of an imposter syndrome uh, going on. Um, you, you might be looking at other people's uh, lives and, and sort of idealizing them. Uh, to be clear here, um, imposter syndrome is the experience of feeling like a phony. You feel as though at any moment you're going to be found out as a fraud, like you don't belong where you are, and you only got there through dumb luck. So I'll contextualize this as a musician. Oftentimes when I scroll through social media and I find someone that's way better at guitar than me, and there's the you know endless, no matter how good you are, there's always a 12-year-old that's probably better. Um, that, that can really make you feel like a fraud when you're just endlessly scrolling through Instagram and you're watching a dozen people play uh, Sweet Child of Mine, you know, by Guns N' Roses. And you're just watching and everyone's playing it really good. They're all playing it better than you. And then you sort of start to question yourself. You're like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to play Sweet Child of Mine. Or, oh, I don't play it as good as they do. Wow, look at their gear. Look at how well rehearsed they are. It, it sort of starts to feed on your mental energy, your anxiety, and it, it feeds on your insecurities. And it, it can be very damaging. So I look at this, you know, this sort of change in my life as, as a bonus. I wasn't having severe mental health issues or, or suffering from addiction or anxiety uh, due to social media. But I, think, I still think there's a net benefit that, that can be had here for me, and potentially for other people. And that's why I think this is something that's worth discussing, dis <laughs> disgusting, discussing on the Shack cast. Um, another thing uh, that, and, and this was really, for me, the straw that broke the camel's back, uh, was the hatred and, and sort of dogging on everything, the hot takes, the negativity uh, that you find, and especially on Twitter, I would be like, Hey, uh, just start playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. Wow, I'm having a real blast with this game. It's so fun to explore the open world. And then, you know, first comments like, Zelda sucks! Comment number two is, Breath of the Wild's easily the worst. Link to the past is the best. Like, you know, you just get... And I guess you can filter it by blocking people who are just not listening or not responding, not letting the toxicity get to you, whatever it may be. But it just feels like, Anything you say, wow, really enjoyed the latest Star Wars movie. All the new Star Wars movies suck, Aaron. Why are you watching them? Everybody knows this one's the worst, and here's why. And then they then they do like a whole thread for you. And it's like, that is something I strove to get away from. Because anytime I was trying to share something that I enjoy, I always had at least one person just like, you're wrong, you suck. Like, why does it have to be said? Why can't we just enjoy things? Why can't we share that we enjoy things? And and maybe if you don't like it, just don't say anything or just say, "Oh wow, I never I never thought you would enjoy it." Or or what's your perspective? What what makes you like that so much? Why do you like a uh, uh, Rogue One a Star Wars story so much? Why do you enjoy Solo? It seems like most people hate that movie. 
But why do you like it, Aaron? You know, we could have conversations without being hateful or or just dogging on everything just to be contrarian. You know, it just it feels like more people just you know spreading hate and sort of spreading your your dislike of things. That's like the cool new thing is to be the edgy guy that dislikes everything. Nothing's quite up to your standards because you're so hoity-toity. I mean, I'm I'm just at the point where I want to enjoy things. I used to really dislike a lot of the Star Wars stuff, a lot of the prequels and you know, and I wasn't like super impressed by the sequels, but you know, I learned to look at other perspectives and rewatch things and just try to enjoy everything that's out there and I ended up watching Clone Wars and Rebels and Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett and I'm pretty much caught up on everything Star Wars and I'm I'm just enjoying every little piece that they're putting into the world. I have, you know, my little, you know, there's my critiques, there's my dislikes, you know, there's some movies I don't like as much as others, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm just thankful that there's a lot of content out there and there's a little something for everyone. Um so some of the other things, you know, and and we might have touched on this with some of the imposter syndrome but when you're on Instagram, there's a lot of sort of fakeness. And and this might spread to other places, but there's a lot of filters, right, that, that sort of change the way we look. It makes our eyes look bigger. Um, it takes away blemishes on your skin. Um, makes your face longer, rounder, changes your voice to make it sound more appealing when you're recording a video. So there's this sense of fakeness and you know, you're probably looking at travel photographers as well, and, and you're seeing them go to all these exotic destinations and showing off all these spas and hotels that they go to. And people tend to only show the good parts of their lives when they're on social media. You know, hey, got a new guitar. Hey, got this new game. Hey, just went to Hawaii on vacation. Here's all my photos. You know, and, and so it doesn't really show the day-to-day -day of people's lives or what people really look like. There's always sort of this fancy gloss or a filter or this idealized lifestyle. And then, you know, I guess that kind of ties in with, like, body shaming and, you know, just if you sort of look into the, the way that Instagram models do things, you know, they'll suck in their gut or they'll take a picture from a certain angle that accentuates their features and, and exaggerates how large certain body parts might be or how small other body parts might be, you know, ways to make your waist look slimmer, but your your bust or, or your backside look bigger. You know, there's all sorts of tricks and filters and, you know, sort of camera lens effects that can uh, accentuate things like that. And so you're getting this idealized and an ideal body that you're projecting to, especially young women, they've looked at this in studies. Um, there was some documentaries. There was one on Netflix that was really good. Um, that was on Netflix. The Social Dilemma. And that one actually looked at how, like, Pre-teens, like young young girls, were sort of seeing all these idealized women on Instagram and Snapchat and all these different things, and they were sort of becoming depressed and they were wanting to sort of accentuate their features much like them, wanting to get lip implants or nose jobs at young ages and stuff, or becoming suicidal because they don't look like what they believe they're supposed to look like, what's put on us by, by culture. Um, I guess one of the last cons I would talk about is probably cancel culture. It, it, you know, social media is a, a breeding ground for sort of dogpiling on people to cancel them or, or for you to be canceled by, you know, maybe a simple thought or, or, you know, sometimes it's well-deserved. Sometimes it's, you know, something that's really bad, but it, cancel culture is is definitely or at least the way that it doesn't allow for growth or learning or or you know it's it's all about the consequences but never about the redemption or allowing people to correct themselves to apologize to learn and grow if people are willing to do that not everyone is there's some people that won't apologize that will just say 
this is the way I am. I'm not being offensive. They'll just go all the way through. But, you know, for the people that want to correct, even if they've done a great wrong, you know, everyone deserves that chance. But maybe they don't deserve a second chance with you, but, you know, they deserve that chance to to change and try to correct themselves and to become a better person. Because look at it this way. None of us are perfect in our lives. We all make mistakes. We all say the wrong things or do the wrong things at some point in our lives. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't end our lives. It shouldn't, you know, to an extent, it, it shouldn't get us fired from our jobs. But if there's wrongdoing and it, and it can be corrected or it can be talked out or it can go through the court system, whatever it is, you know, I, I think maybe we should let things go that way. But I, I don't think cancel culture is going anywhere as a result. Um, some of the benefits of social media. A lot of the reasons that I've tried to stay with social media is because, you know, either I or others have said, well, it's a great way to promote yourself. For your photography, as a photographer, it's great to post your pictures on Instagram and link to your blog. Um, it's great to post your music on SoundCloud or or have a, a music page on Facebook or, or some other site, or have a Twitter dedicated to your Twitch or YouTube stream where you're posting going live alerts or hot takes about video games or, or whatever it may be. Um, it's also good for finding friends, communicating with friends, finding communities of people that might uh, think similar to you if you want to find Star Wars fans, you know, just search the Star Wars hashtag and pretty soon you'll find slews of people. You might see mutual friends of your friends and, and sort of start to identify with them or, or uh, you know, want to communicate with them. But it also, there's also this thing, as, as it applies with streamers, you also see it with Twitter and other things, is that I, I guess if you're not as popular, if you don't have as many followers, or if it seems like you're networking, if it seems like a transaction, it, it becomes very hard to sort of friend other people, to sort of have those conversations that will lead to becoming a friend, an acquaintance, a uh, uh, collaborator, whatever it may be, even if you have good intentions, even if you're not in it purely for monetary gain or networking or or whatever, you're just looking to communicate with people. Sometimes it can be very one-sided. It can be a very, uh, I, I guess, uh, symbiotic uh, relationship. Am I saying that? I'm... No, sorry. Parasitism, right? No, that's where the host is harmed. What am I trying to say? I don't even know. Because symbiotic is, is where they both benefit. Uh, maybe it is parasitic, where it's like o only one side benefits. Like, you, you tweeting at someone, they get benefits because you're reacting to their tweet and commenting and, and building publicity on their tweet, they don't necessarily have to respond to you. It's kind of like when you're interacting with a celebrity, maybe, or or tweeting at a celebrity. They they really get so much fan mail in a day that it, it just becomes impossible. Yeah, I don't know why I was going for symbiotic, but uh, maybe that's just a, a catchphrase. But, yeah, I mean, there are benefits to social media. It's a, it's a way to connect with friends, whether they're long-lost friends, they're, they're living far away, you've got family that you can get in touch with, you can see their memories, their wedding photos, you know, you can keep up with their the baby they just had, or whatever it may be. You know, there's certainly positives, and that's why I haven't really just wiped out all my profiles, I think, I think I still wouldn't mind checking in every now and then about, you know, just to just to see if things are all right with people or or just to see if anyone's trying to interact with me. But I, I just, I saw too many cons on the list and 
the time wasting that it gets. And even if I'm just like waking up in the morning and I check Twitter, like 30 minutes or an hour could go by and and you're just laying there in bed. And that's why I kind of have rules like for myself, like, you know, don't look at your phone until you're out of bed already. And don't look at your phone before you go to bed because you start scrolling and, you know, you just get trapped. And then before you know it, hours have gone by and you're not asleep. And then you can't sleep because, you know, you do kind of need that time for your eyes to adjust, you know, like read a book or or turn down the lights and sort of relax and try to prepare yourself to sleep. You have to kind of coax yourself into sleep. Um for those of us that are not like easy sleepers, um, you know, you sort of have to go through this process of, of no screens, you know, 30 minutes or an hour before bed or whatever it may be. And, and kind of the same thing in the morning. You want to wake up, you want to have your coffee, a shower, whatever. You want to start your productive routine rather than, you know, just like check your phone and just kind of, you know, and probably just fall back asleep, right? <laughs> and then be late for work or something or to waste time that you could use being productive, preparing for your work day, whatever it may be, right? So, I mean, there's there's just, there were so many cons that I just decided it was time to to just sort of cut down on this and, and see how things go. I, I also had no way of sort of checking analytics to see whether me tweeting that I was going live or that I dropped a new video or to go check out my latest podcast episode. People, I feel like the people know where to find me, right? If you're watching this video on YouTube, you already know where to find me. You might have already subscribed to my channel, although if you haven't, please do. And ring that notification bell so you don't miss a video or a live stream or a Shackcast episode. Much appreciated. Liking the video also goes a long way to help it become discovered by more people. Of course, you can leave a comment down below if you have any feedback, you want to discuss social media from your point of view. Uh, just be kind. That's all I ask. Respectful. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, definitely big thank you for tuning in. Um, I, I feel like you'll find me through these various places. And I have enough information in the YouTube description for you to find my podcast, my uh, photography blog, my Discord, whatever it may be, whatever way you're looking to connect or see more of my content. Or if you're already following me on various outlets, you're already going to be seeing me. So why do I need to be on five or seven other apps telling you, hey, go to this app and see my latest thing. It, it seems redundant. And so it's more for me about uh, focusing what energy I have on what's important, right? So if I want to song write in the morning, then I don't need to be scrolling on my phone or watching videos or, or looking at the latest cat video on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever it may be. So it's about focusing my energy, putting it somewhere good, and it's it's February now, so we're we're only a month or so in on on this sort of social media cleanse. But uh, I I can tell, especially today, I I pulled up Twitter and just kind of looked at like what people were talking about, and it was like people complaining about uh, the the book of Boba Fett show and and whining about things and and just finding the dumbest things to argue about about the show which you know it's fine but it it was like it was like i don't like the new ship that he has he's a, supposed to be a bounty hunter why does he have this hot rod like you know or or just like i don't know just why is the show not about boba fett <laughs> you know, and everybody was complaining at first that the show was about Boba Fett, and now they're mad that there's all these cameos and interesting tie-in storylines that are happening, and really surprising characters showing up, That so much so, so that the past few episodes haven't really been about Boba Fett at all. So, I mean, I, I just looked at Twitter, and I was like, wow, I'm glad I left. 
Like, look at what it is. And then I'd look at the gaming articles and just see that people are trying to cancel Critical Role for for not being sensitive enough to certain cultures. And I just thought it, it's a it's a hit piece from Kotaku. And it's, you know, and then looking at other games and how people are just saying Halo Infinite's dead, Marvel's Avengers is dead, uh, Sifu is, in, in, is, is made by developers that were not Chinese, and why are they making a game that's in China and based on Chinese stuff, and, you know, ha, are they not, al- are we, are people not allowed to make content, you know, if they're not of that culture, can we not find a way to respectfully create content of other cultures? Can we not be sensitive while we're doing that? Or or can only Chinese people make games that are in China? Or Japanese people only make games that are in Japan? And only Americans can make games that are based in America? It just... I just saw articles like that, and I just thought... It, it makes me glad that I'm not reading this filth every day, because it doesn't... It doesn't add any positivity to my day. And if I want to have these conversations, I can have them with people. I can reach out to my friends and we can talk about Boba Fett and we can argue about the merits of the show and how good it is compared to other Star Wars shows. We can debate uh, what is cultural appropriation in games, uh, you know, and that's that could be more constructive and more healthy and positive rather than a hit piece, you know? Like, why... Everything's just got to be so controversial so that you'll click on it. I I don't like it. Sorry. Sorry if I'm different. Um, but I believe that's kind of where it is. That's that's really all I can say on this topic. I'd like to know your thoughts if you've ever tried a social media purge or if you're currently on one yourself. Have you deleted all the apps from your phone? Are you not looking back? Did you... Uh, completely erase your profiles or do you still check in every now and then just to to look at things to see how people are doing and maybe maybe it's about you know much like uh drinking alcohol all good things in moderation right maybe it's about finding a healthy balance and for me right now zero is a a pretty healthy balance and i've found that i'm wasting less time on these non-productive apps and maybe I'm using apps that are more productive like the app I use for note taking or voice recording so I can track music and and listen back to musical ideas that I have so I'm focusing on things that promote my creativity and not stuff that leech onto my time and my creativity and pull me into a negative place that could affect, you know, mental health and and cause some sort of addiction. So I guess the question for me, is social media worth it? I, I'm saying no right now. But what's your answer? Let me know in the YouTube comments in this video down below. Uh, we just ask that you be kind and respectful. Gamers, I want to thank you all for watching. This has been episode 15 of the Shackcast. Is social media worth it? Uh, if you're on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single video or live stream or Shackcast episode. And if you're listening to us on any of our other sources, such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I want to thank you for listening. I appreciate the support, and I hope you're excited for all future episodes. And feel free to go back and uh, give a listen to some of the older ones if you like. It's always good. Well, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.